talked on the phone. I did a little homework. Uh, you signed a bunch of, you know, not a bunch, but you signed some young artists just recently um, uh, that, I, that I thought were really interesting. One was a gal by the name of Maddie Noyes. One was a, a gal by the name of Clarity. One's from Mississippi. One's from a small town in Tennessee. Um, and I'm interested to know, hear more about them, you know, A, how you, what attracted him, and B, how you found out about those artists that weren't, like, in the mainstream of the business. Why don't we start with Maddie? I mean, Maddie, which is M-A-T-Y, and her last name actually is Noise, which is kind of incredible. You know, I mean, when you have a name like Flam, you get a little bit of last name envy once in a while, you know, but, because, uh, you know, when I was a kid, I had to deal with Styrofoam or Flim Flam Flam, whatever the fuck people would call me. So, um, so yeah, Noise as a last name, like, get the fuck out of here, right? How good is that? Is that a real it's name? Incredible. What's that? That's a real name? A real name, M-A-T-Y-N-O-Y-E-S. I encourage everybody to, to look her up on, on Insta or whatever. Um, but the, uh, you know, she's from a place called Corinth, Mississippi, um, which is, uh, you know, not exactly, uh, I haven't been there, but I don't guess it's like Paris in springtime. And, um, <laughs> yeah, she had an interesting story, Steve, because she, um, when she turned 16, the day she turned 16, she got her driver's license and just hopped in a car and drove to Nashville and started playing shows, I think with her parents' blessing. Um, but either way, that's what she did. And then uh, some managers there, uh, Phoenix Stone and Civil Hall, they found her, uh, sent her up here. You know, me and my committee here, we listened to it, and it was like, oh, my God, this girl's voice is insane. And, um, and that was another one of those that you talk about. Like, no social media following, no nothing, just this angelic voice. And, um, yeah, I mean, what is it? I mean, well, let's, let's segue into that. I mean, what, what do you think makes her so special? I honestly, like, she, she is just breathtaking. Like, she just takes the oxygen. Like he, my dad said earlier, she just takes the oxygen out of the room. And then it really, the moment, I, I knew that he knew that she was off the charts. Like, the first time he heard any music of hers, he, it was over. You know what I mean? He just, a switch flips, and it's like, he knows that this is the one. And I, I have to agree. I wasn't, you know, she is doing the music she's making is actually quality. And this is coming from a kid. I, 95% of the time, I hate every song in the top 20. Her music is incredible. It really is just magical. So, yeah. Uh, there was another one that caught my ear that, that kind of vaguely reminded me a little bit of, of Lord in the sense that it was kind of, you know, you looked at the picture of the gal and the voice and all that, and then it all kind of worked. Her name was Clarity. She was from a little town in uh in tennessee she kind of got this kind of quasi librarian look going on but when she starts singing again there's something special going on talk about clarity a little bit if you would how'd you hook up with her so clarity's from a town called white house tennessee which i give anybody a dollar if they knew a town like white house tennessee even existed um i think it has one uh stoplight and a waffle house and that's about it um but yeah, and she's she was really an outcast there. You know, she's uh, she looks like she'd be right at home at the in the East Village, and she is. But in White House, Tennessee, that doesn't work. So she was bullied out of school uh, by eighth grade, homeschooled, and, and writes this music that comes from the perspective of sort of being an alien um, in her own school, in her own skin. And uh, it was brought to me by Cara Diaguardi, who was sort of mentoring her. And Cara, of course, is a legendary songwriter in the business, and. Um, I just heard it and I thought, this is, it's just like, it's sort of just, it reminded me of Tori Amos more so than Lord, actually, when mm -hmm. I first heard it. And uh, I just had to work with it. And I think it's going to be, it's going to be a very slow build, um, you know, because we are starting from really ground zero, going back to one of the questions. There's not a, it's not a social media darling, but we're starting to get some good, you know, nice blog love, some good looks. We're, we're again, aggressively working on the soundtracks and stuff. And um, yeah, I feel... I'm really, really proud of what she's doing, and she's writing the best stuff now. So we have an EP out now on iTunes. Did you guys everywhere. make that EP, Jason, or was that did she do that on her own? She did it after we signed her, um, but that's not to say she didn't do it on her own. I mean, we yeah, you know, we had some you know some input with producer suggestions and things like that, um, right? I mean, what did uh, I'm trying to remember? I think yeah, I think it kind of came together collaboratively, but. Um, but now she's working with Fraser T. Smith and some of these other really like A-list writers. Um, she's a great writer on her own. So 
again, now it's just about finding, you know, the, the music industry is a jigsaw puzzle. And after you sign an artist, it's just the, the game is trying to figure out where they fit, whose buttons you have to push, who you have to take to play golf, who you have to take out for a lunch or whatever. If you want to learn the music business, let me be your music business mentor. When you get done with my course, you won't be thinking like some rookie getting out of college. You'll think like a grizzly music business veteran.